Good morning. Welcome to New Journey UCC. Old and new friends, we're happy to have you together on this, uh, again, another warm Sunday morning. But this is what we were hoping for about six months ago, so this is what we're, we're going to go with it. Um, just a reminder that um, offering is at the back of the church. Uh, we don't pass the basket, um, so if you're feeling so inclined, it is back there. And um, announcements. This week, Wednesday night, 6.30, council meeting. Remember, anyone is invited to that. And then July 27th, the next Wednesday at 6.45, Faith Enrichment will gather. A reminder, Common Cup is, um, we are collecting school supplies for Common Cup this year, and we've been assigned backpacks, um, dry erase markers, Sets of four. We need a lot more of these. We need a lot more backpacks, um, pencils, and um, those large pink erasers. So if you need a list, there's a little um, slip out where you see the supplies gathered. And then, Joanne, do we have until like August? <coughs> I think August 15th is when they're gathering supplies. Okay, August 15th. The giveaway is on the 17th. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh. Donations accepted until August 5th, I got all of a sudden written down here. We'll check on that to see how long we have. So. Um, but don't, don't forget that. Also, remember to sign up in the back, in the back of the sanctuary on July 31st. We'll have our last Sunday without Pastor Joe. Um, she will start that next day back in the office. And we are going to have a lunch afterwards. You don't have to bring any food. But we do need help <coughs> setting up, serving, <coughs> cleaning up. It won't be a big deal. Don't forget to sign up in the back if you're planning on coming so we have a head count for ordering food. And then if you can help out, sign up. Also, don't forget there are sign-ups uh, out here to help greet, uh, to help do the PowerPoint, um, and to be a reader. And we need all of that. There are lots of lots of empty spots, especially in the summer. So don't forget to sign up for those things. Are there any other announcements that I have forgotten? All right. Well, in that case, let's uh, do our gathering song, Come to the Water. Christ. 
Our scripture reading for this morning is from Ezekiel 34, 11 through 16. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with a good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall tie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. And now from John 10, 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. I know some of you are probably wondering why I chose to deal with the topic of shepherds in July. Maybe it's because I believe their story is seasonless and that I love the stories and the characters of the Bible. Now, I was debating what the focus would be for today's message and what the title would be. And we all know that once you have the title, you're practically done. <laughs> now, it didn't take too long, and a phrase popped into my head from the day of last year's Christmas pageant right here. I had written the script, and we had rehearsed the kids, who were now getting into their costumes. And then two more children walked in the, into the room wanting to participate. And before I could say anything, one of the teachers said, we can always use more shepherds. <laughs> and it's true. It's a lofty goal for all of us, being a shepherd. I mean, you can find them all over the place. Now, during my childhood summers, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. I was given free run of their town. Grandma would remind me to head back to the house when I heard the noon whistle. And then after lunch, I was off to meet up again with my gang. And we would spend the afternoon making life miserable for the town constable. <laughs> He'd chase us off the ball field, out of the dump, out of the park, and let's just say, we kept him very busy. I thought I was leading quite the secretive life whenever I touched base with my grandparents during the day. They seemed to know every place I'd been, who I saw, and what I had done. Seems there were a whole bunch of shepherds in town just funneling information to each other and watching out for all the kids in town the shepherds of Plato. And, uh, hang on, get, get ready for it. And some of them were German shepherds. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, I had several favorite books to check out of the Negro Library at School District number 19, which, by the way, was located close to Jensen's Locker Plant where one could conveniently stock up on penny candy for the bike ride home. I loved reading and, and rereading about Heidi, who lived in the mountains of Switzerland and spent her days tending a goat herd with her grandfather. 
Now, there was another book. I can't remember the name of it. I would love to find a copy of it. It was about a young girl in Lapland who spent her days out in the mountains herding reindeer. Now, maybe I missed my calling, or maybe I didn't. It seems I've spent most of my adult life being involved with working with children, so maybe I am a shepherd. So, let's talk about shepherds. When Jesus was born, representative groups came to attend his birth. There were Simeon and Anna who were the devout believers who represented spiritual-minded people who came to the birth of Jesus. The wise men came when Jesus was born. They remind us that studious people came to the Lord Jesus Christ. The keenest minds of all the ages have been those who have humbly bowed at the manger of the Lord Jesus Christ. The shepherds came, and they would represent the simple, common, ordinary people who are drawn to the baby Jesus who was born in Bethlehem's manger. A ragtag collection of sheep herders. There's only one announcement of Christ's birth recorded in the scriptures, only one invitation from God to anyone to come and visit Mary and Joseph and the infant Jesus. And that one invitation goes to a bunch of uneducated, smelly, low-class, social and religious outcasts, a bunch of shepherds. Now, life for the shepherds was a difficult kind of life. They were really kind of low on the social scale. Though they had a noble history, their occupation had come into hard times. They were out there on an obscure hill, tending some sheep, and very little went on out there. They didn't have phones to play games on, probably didn't know how to read. Most people didn't even regard them with a great deal of respect. So you wouldn't expect anything great to take place where shepherds were tending just a few sheep, would you? And on top of all that, they probably didn't have much contact with other people. It wasn't a 40-hour week job. They didn't go home at night. Unlike the cowboys in the old Wild West, they didn't just leave their sheep and go into town at night. They were with the sheep 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not even a bath on Saturday night or any time for that matter. During the day, they would lead the sheep to grass and water. And they watched while the sheep grazed. And the shepherd's diet was the same day after day after day. Probably something like a piece of dried meat or unleavened crusty bread. Now, Native Americans ate pemmican. That was a mixture of tallow, dried meat, and dried berries. Or it could have been something like a, a hardtack that the military, sailors, or even cowboys ate. That was a biscuit made from flour, water, and salt. And it could last up to three months and not spoil. Whatever their diet was, in all likelihood, it wasn't very tasty. They kept an eye out for predators like wolves. And at night, they actually slept in the sheep pen with the sheep to guard against theft and animal attack. A good shepherd could identify each one of his sheep by sight. He knew his sheep and they knew him. In Ezekiel, Jesus says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Sometimes we don't listen, do we? We do that with parents and spouses and children. Sometimes we don't listen to God or Jesus either. 
We get so absorbed in what we're doing or with ourselves, we just don't listen. And this passage reminds us that the voice of the shepherd goes before us, guiding us, protecting us, and telling us who we are. The shepherd goes before us and prepares a way, which means there is no place that we go that the shepherd hasn't already been. He's already made the path clear and safe. There may be hardships, mishaps, even struggles, but the shepherd has already prepared a way for, you know, all we have to do is listen to his voice. And when we prepare our hearts through prayer and worship, we're able to more clearly listen to the shepherd who guides us. The voice of the shepherd protects us. Listening to the shepherd helps us make hard choices about who we are, what we believe, and what is really important. That's especially true right now. The past few years have not been easy. COVID has changed how we live. It's shut down our lives, how we work, and how we worship. From our moment of baptism and our birth into the kingdom of God, the Good Shepherd promises to protect us. The Good Shepherd tells us who we are. The voice of the Good Shepherd, he calls us by name. He's the one who gave his life for us. And yet sometimes as adults, even after hearing all the promises of God, some still persist in living outside of the flock. They question the voice of the Good Shepherd, or the sincerity of the voice. Or worse, they think they can never be worthy of that love. The Shepherd loves those who don't want to have anything to do with him. He even loves those sheep who wander away. That's when the shepherd comes searching to bring them back and reminds them where they belong and to whom they belong. Shades of what we wish we could do today. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. The shepherd is there whispering his, life for, his love for all of us. The voice of the shepherd goes before us, guides us, protects us, and tells us who we are. All we have to do is tune our hearts, souls, and ears, and listen. So what does all this mean to us? Well, if you identify with the shepherds, it should be very encouraging to know that even today, there are shepherds among us. Perhaps you see yourself as uh, someone on the outside looking in. And I imagine that many nights as a shepherd sat out in that cold, lonely field with nothing but animals to keep them company. They looked over at the village and saw the lights of the homes and heard the the faint sound of families, people laughing. And they wish they could be part of that. Now, maybe you felt that way too. Not one of the beautiful people, not especially wealthy or powerful or influential. <laughs> not likely to see your name in the paper for any great accomplishment on the fringes. And you wonder, does God even know I exist? And you know what? A lot of people, deep down, 
feel exactly like that. Even people you would think of as having it all together. On the surface, everything is great, but on the inside, you feel like you don't fit in. You feel like God doesn't really care, couldn't care about someone like you. Now, if any of that description strikes a chord with you, then I've got good news. God loves you. Just like he loved those shepherds, and you are special to him. Just like those shepherds are special to him. So special that he gave them the incredible privilege of being the first to hear of Christ's birth. Being the first people, other than Joseph and Mary, to lay eyes on the Son of God. Being the first to tell others about Christ. Now, he didn't give that privilege to a, a king or to a high priest. He gave it to the shepherds. Not in spite of who they were, but because of who they were. Humble, ordinary people with no high opinions of themselves. Simple people who were willing to simply believe what God told them and to simply do what God commanded them. Now, in our Christmas program last year, the angels came marching down that center aisle and the shepherds who were standing over here, the angels hit the shepherds in the eye with their flashlights and they said, hey, he's been born. Now, can you imagine what the shepherds' reaction was? All of a sudden, there's a bright light and a whole sky full of angels. And when they heard the news, they didn't seek out the religious professionals for a second opinion. They simply accepted what the angels told them. When they were invited to visit Bethlehem to see the newborn Messiah, they didn't worry about who was going to watch their sheep. They didn't get bogged down in debates about how they were going to find one small baby in such a huge town. They simply obeyed and went. It's a pretty cool story. It's a story I grew up cherishing. The story has never changed. I love it. And I hope you do too. Now, there are shepherds among us. And they're working hard. But lately, church has gotten hard. It's a lot of work to stay relevant and to be part of a church family. You know, between COVID and a whole bunch of other reasons, our churches are hurting. They were hurting before COVID. We were just too afraid to admit it. Some congregations have seen the handwriting on the wall. The church that Dick served in Montevideo has announced that their last service will be New Year's Eve. Now, in the past, church was the center of our family life. We had church suppers, flower shows, holiday bazaars, active youth groups who raised money with car washes. I can remember going to ice cream socials and church suppers and attending huge youth gatherings, some right here in this church. In fact, when I was in high school, I gave the sermon right from this pulpit. It's kind of a goosebumpy type memory, you know. Um, we had such an active youth group among all the what are now UCC churches in the area. Life has changed. Our lives have gotten busier. There are fewer people to do the work. And we're trying to understand what we have to do to remain current. I'm not judging. 
I, I admit it, I am part of the problem. Busy life stretched way too thin. Being a shepherd is sometimes too hard to, to fit into my schedule. Yep. Doesn't the good shepherd always have time for us? Now, I'm worried. Even on the hard days of church, I remember God has never failed to meet me right here. How about you? You know, it may never be the way it was. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. But are we listening? Where's the answer? I don't know about you, but every time I don't know how I'm going to do something, God shows up. He's usually someplace pretty close. Now, I have a three-year-old great-grandchild. And at bedtime, whoever is in their home sits on a, in a circle on their floor in her bedroom, and they pray together. And they remind her that she is loved and that God is watching her and protecting her while she sleeps. Well, several weeks ago, in the middle of the night, she gets up and goes into her parents' bedroom and says, Hey, guys, you got to come in here and tell that guy to quit watching me. I am trying to sleep. <laughs> Remember, the shepherd's always around. And we are the people of God. We belong to each other. Be a shepherd. Amen. Do we have any prayers to bring forth today? Join together in the prayer that we have been taught, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Calling and free. 